Gigacast graced us with another video. Winter Anime 2024 in a nutshell. Let's see what he has to say. With the banger year we've just had, 2024 has a lot to live up to. You're following a year that gave us moments that are going to be remembered for a long time to come, with iconic quotes that will live on in the hearts of anime fans. The moon is red. Inspiring lines such as... <laughs> And of course, no, you should have fucking dropped the Eminence and Shadow line and compared it with the Vinland Saga line. Because, like, I have no enemies. It's so deep and profound. And then they should have gave Shadow saying dumb shit like, mm, the time of awakening is near. And such as, and of okay. course, kill yourself. Truly. In a game, in, in a game, relax, Frieden. Moving phrases that the anime community have taken and made their own. But what else has this new year got in store for us? Well, for once, we're not buried under a cascade of high profile sequels. There's Classroom mm. of the Elite. Tsukimichi yeah. is apparently one of the best isekai I haven't finished yet that I need to. One of the best romances of last year is back with the danger. <sighs> Dangers in my heart, man. We haven't really been watching rom com in this channel. I know that season two is airing. I feel like I am missing out. But I mean, if you guys want to watch it, just let me know in, in the heart, polls. Looking like it's only going to get even better from there. Mashal season two. Now I know what you're all thinking. Are we going to see more of the most iconic? <laughs> this is if you don't know, Gigguk was voice acting, and unfortunately, he he did get a mob character's role, but he still did it. He still did it. Role in anime. Owl number one. Oh, oh. Maybe. I think Wait, he was an owl too in the dub? This is your best work yet. But enough about sequels. What else? That's do we hilarious. Have? We've got more romance, more slice of life, more girls, more isekai, mm. a lot of isekai. Again, Good. and of nice. course we got the action, baby. Woo! Look at this. Oh yeah, shit's about to go down. What is this anime? What the fuck is this anime? He's about to fuck shit up. Yo, what is this? Ah oh, yeah. Now, last, last video, last video, right? Gigguk made another video last time, right? And this intro theme hasn't changed. So I made a mistake because this video, Best of Anime 2023, had a different intro. And I thought that this is, you know, different from what it usually does. No, what, his song right here, right? This is the iconic one that he does in like different seasonal anime. Well, this is more like an annual review, right? Yeah. The music's the same. The music is the same. But before we move on, this video is sponsored by Honkai Star Rail, use your uh, fucking discount code GIGUK for your first 10 pulls for uh, Black Swan, yes. Don't wait to unvirginify ourselves. Well, it's official, guys. Well what the fuck is the time? What is even in the context of that? What? What? Universe and Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring me today. Back to the video. Okay. <laughs> This is an anime about getting magic powers because you remained a virgin until the age of 30. You know there's like a chart of like, if you're a virgin till like age of 30, you're like a magician. Age of 50, you're like a wizard. Age of 70, you're like a sage. You know, so they made a fucking anime about that. Honey, don't wait to unvirginify ourselves. <laughs> well, it's official, guys. While us decrepit sex havers were busy enacting coitus, these damn okay. virgins were secretly getting wizard powers. No way. Say, weebs. But I've let you down. But the fight is not over. You can finish what I couldn't accomplish. Okay, so our guy here has the ability to read minds by touching people because he's a virgin. But the catch-22 is the man is such a giga virgin that he can't ever touch anyone oh. except for O. Oh. This is just fucking BL. No, 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 no. As soon as you look at a fucking guy's face and these just Bro, look at this shit. This is Yaoi. You can tell by the way they draw the characters, bro. Look at this oh, shit. <laughs> it's that kind of show. Yeah. Well, nothing says true bromance like helping your mates lose their virginity. And honestly, how can you complain? My man is really putting the top in top husband material. He's... This guy's clearly the top. The green hair guy's the bottom. Like, let's get serious. This is just yaoi bait. He's using the forbidden Eren Jaeger technique to riz up his fellow bro. <laughs> this is Mikasa right now. Mikasa scar. It's been a while since we've seen a show. What in the fuck was that? Oh, oh, oh. Forbidden Eren Jaeger technique to riz up his fellow Hold bro. Hold up. It's been a while. Okay. Anyway, this is called Cherry Magic 30 Years of Virginity. Since we've seen a show go full. <laughs> this anime is just about 30 year old dudes just fucking gay baiting us? That's it? Yell bro love, but suffice to <laughs> say, this is the most homoerotic thing we're gonna see all season. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what is this? It's an ending. Military. Uh 
Never mind, we found a new contestant for the gayest show of this season. What is this? What is this? <laughs> is this the fucking singing musical of military pros, dude? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> His bottle says hetero juice. <laughs> Stay strong. Stand strong, Giga. Stand strong. Okay, bro. Bro, come on now. How the fuck are you gonna just like drip all that water in your sweater like that? That just looks so sus. I think I like men now. After the witch. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. From Mercury tried to revolutionize the genre. It's good to see Mecha going back to its roots. Just get guys it? in it. But on a serious note, don't. True, too much Yuri Mecha recently. We need more Yaoi Mecha. Don't make the same mistake as me and almost skip this. I thought this was just going to be another standard real robot show. People are dying on the battlefield, fighting for their lives. You are witnessing the true horrors of war. Then out of nowhere, this guy drops in and just... Just mm -hmm. listen to his theme song. <laughs> for those of you unfamiliar with... Bro has his own fucking theme song. Now, Mecha shows, it's kind of um, very polarizing, right? Some people really love Mecha. Some people just hate Mecha, no matter how good the story could be because Mecha exists, right? I'm kind of... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of Mecha. I did grow up watching Gundam here and there, but somehow robots fighting robots never kind of appealed to me, right? I'm just trying to be honest. With Mecha, this is like the equivalent of people fighting for survival in the brutal world of Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan is kind of Mecha too, right? Think about it. No, no, think about it. It's flesh Mecha. <laughs> really think about it. Really think about the nature of the Titans and a Mecha suit in Gundam and ask yourself... What really is the difference between the two, other than the flesh and the technology, you know? Just think about it. Then suddenly, All Might drops in. This is what happens when everyone working on the show knows exactly what they are doing. This is a mecha show by mecha fans for mecha fans. With the gun-ho Top Gun bravado that comes with it. Just a bunch of manly men doing manly stuff, saying sure. completely manly things to their fellow manly No bros. sussy yeah. things. You better win your fight, because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming. Excuse me? To the fellow manly bros. Yeah, you better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. Oh. I'm coming for that ass. Oh. Solo leveling. Okay. okay. This is meant to be the big one this season. And if you've seen my previous video on the manhwa. Yes, we know about solo leveling. The anime that everybody is glazing ball sack to asshole in that order and back for righteous reasons, in my opinion. I think this is the like the most anticipated anime of the season. It's cut in like 17 separate trailers leading up to this. They did great promo, great advertisement, and the source material, the webtoon or the original web, whatever, like the web novel or right something, right? It's really, really hype. Now, I can't believe he fucking spoiled us. Because, like, like, the thumbnail here is just spoiling you again. And, like, motherfuckers have been coming into my comment section just spamming this word, the word, you know, over and over. But it is what well, it is. Oh, you'd know that I'm a big fan. And these opening mm -hmm. episodes seem decent. They held nothing back when it came to the sheer violence compared to the original webcomic. Hiroyuki yep. Sawano is, as always, bringing the hype with his OST. Animation seems... Here comes the butt crack. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This scene has been repeated. Probably the scene that's been played the most out of every solo leveling YouTuber. <laughs> you know, every video has this scene in it. Good. Yeah. And this opening is what I hear in my head when I'm getting a kill streak in Counter Strike. Oh, I'm not gonna. Jesus. I'm not gonna lie. During the K pop opening. I don't know what the fuck they're saying. I, 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 I know that part where it says, like, um, what you gonna do <laughs> solo, but other than that, I don't know what the fuck they're saying. But I am a little cautious because A1 Pictures is doing a pretty good job with the animation, but let's okay. be real here. Solo leveling is not coming in here as the pinnacle of storytelling. One big thing that... I don't think anyone's watching this show for a objectively good story like Vinland Saga. People just want to turn their brain off and witness the glory of Sung Jin Mu do cool shit, right? That's pretty much it. What made this title stand out was that the art was absolutely godlike. Not just good, godlike. They gave us some of the best heart-pounding action scenes you can find in webcomics. So the real question is, is this anime going to be able to match that? Because when I look at this art, I'm... Probably not. Like, it's the same thing as One Punch Man manga, right? The redrawn version. Like, the people meme about... Well, season one was pretty good, but season two was so trash that people say that the manga is better animated than the anime. Which is... 
objectively not true, but at the same time, it is true. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, sometimes there's, like, you, how are you going to capture this fight? Like, how are you going to do this in the anime and make it look as good? I just don't think it's possible. It's hard to translate. It, it's like a, you, it's a lost in translation while you go from one medium to another. I'm thinking the action has to be like Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 level, you know what I mean? Because take that away and we have a story that's not too dissimilar to the truckload of power fantasy isekai we see every season. The main character ends up more perfect than Kirito. Side characters become as useful as Yamcha. This is an... Juhi is already power crept, my man. Juhi, like, and here's the thing. Juhi, like, Cha Heian doesn't even show up in the show, apparently, for a long time. But they already brought her in the anime. The directors are already power creeping Juhi, dude. She's washed. She's fucking washed. As useful as Yamcha. This is an unapologetic power fantasy show that lives on the rule of cool. And if we don't have similar godlike animation, what more can the show give us that we haven't already seen? Arise. All right, actually, I'm sold. We've got a few villain. Can you just do that? Like, I feel like these are spoilers that you should not be just like, listen, am I, am I being like a fucking pussy right now? And being like, oh my god, Giga, you shouldn't spoil that for the fucking solo leveling fandom for the anime only. No, I haven't already spoiled because motherfuckers have been coming into my videos for like four months out before solo leveling even started when I was covering any news and Giga video. It's not a spoiler, but it is. Now, you don't, I don't know the context of it, but like... That's like such an important thing. You know what I mean? I feel like some things are better left unsaid. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but for something as iconic and as important as this word, right? Compared to what everyone's talking about, it feels like, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. This anime this season, and this was the one that definitely interested me the most. And yes, it is. What is this shit? Because I am a sucker for Oh, this is the uh, seventh time loop villainous, the other uh, Otome. No, is this an Otome game? I'm not really sure, but I prefer level 99 villainous more because power fantasy. Time loop anime. Coming from the manga that seems to have a curse for mediocre anime adaptations like Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, it looks like one of his works is finally getting a decent adaptation. I'm what not is this? Too familiar with oh, this one, but the anime that is to be blamed for the delay of re-zero season three that's right blame single kuyoko for whatever fucking reason studio white fox decided hmm you know that isekai that re-zero that everyone loves yeah boss how about we say fuck it delay that shit and we focus on 37 episodes of single kuyoko out of nowhere <laughs> why I don't fucking know. They decided to do it, though. I mean, don't hit on the enemy. Maybe it's good. Check it out. But, you know, this is the reason why ReZero ain't happening this year. I'm not too familiar with this one, but it does give Maybe me it's really good. Yeah. Get the Spirit Circle adaptation we deserve. Delusional Monthly Magazine is a furry anime? <laughs> what is this shit? Is this just straight up fucking furry anime? <laughs> Account successfully created. <laughs> You are now signed into Discord. What's this? Did this motherfucker just hit him with a virginity punch? What Breath the comes fuck? With another anime original with another. Buchigiri. Oh, this is another anime that some people have been telling me to watch. I haven't seen it yet. I don't think a lot of people are too interested, but I've heard that this is pretty fucking hilarious. A self-proclaimed virgin protagonist in an old-school delinquent showdown anime. I'm not sure what's up with all the freaking virgin. Now, is it an actual delinquent anime, or is this a delinquent anime, but technically a fucking boys love yaoi in disguise, right? Is it? superpowers this season, and why is it always the guys? What about all the female virgins? Come well, most people watching anime are probably dudes virgins you know that's why the fucking main character in a rom-com is like this weak submissive short maybe fat Wait, that, that actually, actually I'm, I'm describing isekai main characters now but you know what i mean like the main characters they're trying to be relatable to the main demographic that could be watching the show like how many rom-coms have you seen where the main character is a fucking wet piece of cardboard no fucking personality got nothing going on for it but for some reason i think the meta recently is a bunch of gals right gyaru girls come in and just save them for no fucking reason other than that they're the main character so that the main audience watching this show that can relate to the main character will buy the fucking blu-ray about the money in the marketing at the end of the day Come on, anime. We need some representation for the freaking Hyman squad. You watch subbed anime, don't you? You know, maybe... <laughs> Did he just call this the Hyman squad? <laughs> Did he just call this the Hyman squad? Freaking Hyman. <laughs> you know what I think? Maybe there will be a future where instead of it's like the guys of version and trying to lose it all, maybe it's going to be the girl instead. 
That's an interesting concept. I wonder how that would play out. That sounds more like that sounds like a reverse harem, right? It sounds like a girl trying to go for a bunch of guys instead. I'm not sure if that anime would do well, because like would a bunch of guys watch the show like that? I'm not sure. In the squad. You watch subbed anime, don't you? Yeah, I mean to sub anime. You mm. mean subbed anime. CBT. Right? Mm. Mm -hmm. CBT. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, now we're talking. Time for some real anime. Change Soldier is the show to watch if you want to be a respectable human being. I, I thought that was going to be... No, I was going to compare it to Gushing Over Magical Girls, but technically that's not really about this, like, whatever the fuck she's doing, like, stepping on her balls and shit. I say respectable, I meant the exact opposite of that. Oh, wait, let's get rid of the subs for a second. Let's see what she says. Human being. Did I say respectable? I meant the exact opposite of that. Perhaps we should make your job as my slave a permanent arrangement. Oh, thank God. No more part-time contractor slave work. I can be full-time employee slave now. Thank you, Kyoka. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. My favorite job. Slavery. That's how it works, right? Yes, it's an anime about a guy who gets... <laughs> Slavery and isekai bad. Twitter fucking mobs. Cancel Rudy and Mushoku Tensei. <laughs> Slavery in <laughs> Chain Soldier. Good. Oh, amazing. Oh, God. Step on me, mommy. <laughs> fucking crazy, dude. Powers by being a slave to a bunch of hot anime girls. Man, what the fuck is going on with this season? Now, before anyone gets angry, this is basically just Power World with a degeneracy mod. Sometimes you have to respect it. Did I just see a bunch of blurred Power World cock? <laughs> what the fuck they censored this for? Sometimes you have to respect a title that knows exactly what it wants to do and hones in on doing that one thing really well, even if that thing is awakening a new fetish every episode. This is the rare type of series that has plot, but also has plot. You uh, already plot. know if this is the type of show for you, but I will say the fight scenes went unexpectedly hard in the manga, and this action animation is not exactly the cream of the crop, but you can only expect so much when the two- <laughs> The CGI is... Not too big of a deal. I, I, it definitely is jarring at times, but from the fight scenes that we're seeing, and even right now, we're still in the middle of like a fight arc, right? I felt like the Yachiho versus uh, Himari fight, it was pretty good. The team is working with one hand. If they chose to put their focus on another certain type of scene, I'll still be a happy man, because let's be honest, guys. Who? They are basically saving all the budget. Okay, the, he's about to get stepped on anyway. <laughs> the amazing boss, he's just looking up at Kyoka about to step on him. But um, uh, they, they gotta save the budget for the reward scenes. Cause like, let's get serious. Like who's watching this shit? It's a bunch of degenerate horny freaks that wants etchy shit, right? So it's like, okay, are they gonna fucking spend the budget on fighting a bunch of fucking monsters? Or are we just gonna CGI that shit? Save the money for the CBT scene right here. Who doesn't want to be stepped on by a group of hot anime girls? Am I right, guys? <laughs> Trigger her back again to save anime from... Dungeon Meshi, right? This time with Dungeon Meshi, or Delicious in Dungeon, which no one actually calls it, even though its name is on the original Japanese manga. Going into this, I thought this was just going to be a simple cooking show where some adventurers explore some dungeons, eat a bunch of weird monsters, yeah. have a good time. I was on board for this, but then I think the episode that really sold me was the one where they find the living armor. Now, in most shows, living armor is just oh. normal armor that's imbued with magic, which is what you and everyone else assumes. But Dungeon Meshi takes this common idea and goes, nah, that's baby shit. So as our hero fights one, he notices something that looks like an egg and thinks to himself why is there an egg why can the armor see me even though it has no eyes maybe this is a living thing after all but it's completely hollow doesn't die if i behead it and it moves too rigid to be a slime and too silent okay. to be a swarm but by some good detective work he manages to uncover a biological explanation behind the living armor that not only makes sense but also makes it edible that made me go damn okay i've never really thought about it like that this is just one of the monsters we find in the series every single creature has care now we did watch episode one of it it felt like um pretty chill well i can't really say chill because the living armor shit looked kind of crazy and it did start off with like sister getting eaten by dragon or some shit but not too much interest in my channel but it is one of those netflix shows that i don't know is highly anticipated so I i'm not sure you guys haven't really told me that you wanted to watch it too much but i bet it's a good show thought put into their biology their ecosystem even the most common fantasy monsters we're familiar with are given their own unique take the insane amount of creativity in the world building makes this feel more like a nature documentary with a cooking twist and yeah. add to this a core cast with banter reminiscent of something you'd find in konosuba and you got yourself a pretty damn good show with this now airing at the same time as free run all i can say is fantasy anime fans are eating good Native isekai, actually, Giga. It's not called fantasy. It's native isekai. Right now. Huh? 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 All right. What show we got next? Yuri. 
Yuri. Oh, she's gonna die. <laughs> and she's dead. You know, I think she still could be savable. <laughs> now nah, she's gonna die. Uh, oh, yeah, she still could be savable. <laughs> this anime is kind of a shock value. Is this episode one? Immediately they just fucking start killing off girls. Oh. Yeah. The savable still? still? Savable? <laughs> oh, no. This is uh, Ishida, right? This is Ishida, the Battle Royale anime. See, what did I tell you? He saved the city, guys. It's sure. saved. Sometimes yeah, it's saved. all the show has is the rule of cool, and sometimes it's enough. Ishira might just be that show. It's some ruined fantasy land where a bunch of Dark Soul bosses gather from all over the world to take part in a no holds bar battle royale. Now, what I've heard about this show is that the premise looks amazing, but apparently every episode is almost like episodic and trying to do like a character intro before they even get to the battle royale fight. I'm not sure if that's still happening, but that's some of the complaints that I've heard. Yeah, bloodbath. Isekai protagonists, undead warriors. Every episode introduces a new stupidly overpowered character for the true battle royale experience that will have you placing bets like this is a UFC match. This might not be the prettiest looking show of the season, but this is it if you want some turn your brain off edgy fun. So, you watch subbed anime? Is this gushing over magical girls? <laughs> nah, I'm into <laughs> So she's just slapping the shit out of these girls right now? Nah, I'm into dumb. You mean dumb? Yeah, yeah, and dumb, no. dumb, dumb. I went into the show completely blind, thinking it was some cute parody of the magical girl genre. Then five minutes in, I realized, wait yeah. a goddamn minute. This I Pretty thought much. Chain Soldier was going to be the only thing bringing the culture this season, but now we have BDSM Bochi if she was a villainess. <laughs> BDSM Bochi. I mean, I think the premise of this show is that this girl is like super introverted and shy and kind of just like not the brightest, not in terms of intelligence, but I'm talking about overall demeanor, right? Kind of like sulky, but like secretly she loves like magical girls. So like she turns into like this like evil girl and gets powers and is able to now fight these magical girls. But instead of like fighting them, it's this fan service and she just fucking just... You know, you saw what was happening, tickling armpits, spanking their ass, pretty much, right? Okay, okay. And the thing is, the scenes here go even harder, but the problem... <laughs> Dude, if only this didn't show nipples, I'd be fine watching it. It's just, it's, a, it's an, I, and I say that while I say Chain Soldier is airing, but it's like... I don't know. I, I know. I know that a lot of people have been telling me to watch this shit. Etchy shows, they're fine. It's just explicit nipples of knowing to go to kick and whatnot. I feel like we don't have to watch it. If you guys really want to watch it, you fucking voted in the polls, they would win. And we can watch it after the season too. It doesn't really matter, but... Yeah, I can, I can definitely respect the hustle. A lot of people are farming this shit. It looks pretty fun. Problem is, it's comedic enough that I don't... That's a lot of armpits. No, if I should laugh or be turned on sometimes. If you want more culture in your life, give this one a watch. This might not be your proudest fap, but it'll certainly be your funniest. I hear this Hokkaido girl anime is also just as fan servicey. <laughs> kunka, kunka. Kunka, kunka. Here's an anime called Hokkaido Gals, a super adorable about some super adorable gals mm. living in Hokkaido. <laughs> Basically, the pre Hokkaido is like kind of like it's not Tokyo for sure, no shit. But I'm talking about like big city versus like countryside, right? So I guess the appeal is like I don't know, countryside gals. What the hell do you need me for? Now, if you don't know anything about Hokkaido, well, it's northern Japan. It's really cold. It has some of the best food you can find in the country, and it's got really thick milk. And then you have the gals. Mm. Now, for anyone wondering how these girls aren't freezing their butts off in this. Just sheer willpower, dude. I swear to God, even back in high school, girls would wear fucking mini skirts and skirts, and they would, in like fucking winter, like negative 10 degrees Celsius. It's like, how are you surviving this? They're built different. Weather, you need to understand that in Japan, short skirts protection to the cold follows the same logic as RPG armor. Cold resistance, right? No armor on high level armor. Makes sense. Yep, makes sense. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. I'll be real with you. This is clearly just paid propaganda by the Hokkaido Tourism Board, and God. Damn it, it's fucking working. Yo, is he going for the Aaron Jaeger strat too? The wrong way to use healing magic. Would have been this is a great isekai. This is something that I thought was gonna be like mid and out of just like generic and whatnot. And it's doing things 
differently in a way you would have never imagined, right? Like, I mean, the whole twist is like a main character that has healing magic that I think might be might be useless, but actually healing magic is one of the most important rare things. And even the way that he uses healing magic actually helps him get more jacked because, you know, it's like training and you heal yourself. You can continue to train and stuff like that. But like all the characters in this show, there's like no revenge plot. The fucking king and the priest that summoned us are actually nice. There's like little little twists in these generic tropes in Isaka that we've always see that keeps us kind of I don't know keeps me on my toes. I I enjoy it a lot. More accurate name for this show, actually. I feel like having Hilo. Or Wait, what did he say? Healing magic would have been a more accurate name for this show, actually. I feel like having. Redo of healer. Yes, I see that. Healer or healing in your title has become a PTSD inducing trigger word for us at this point, but I actually had a lot of fun with this one for one not so obvious reason. I'm into Dom. I mean, Dom, yes, yes. We, we love the Dommy Mommies. Rose is pretty much 80% of the reason why I chose to watch this anime and continue to watch it. For most people, this probably looks like another run of the meal isekai junk. It does, it does. It is. But for someone with a trained eye. No, 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 no. Someone, someone actually hit me with this. Hold up, look at this. Meal isekai junk foods, because it is. And he shows us the generic isekai map, and then I made the same meme about, ha oh, ha look, reused isekai map that you can see in Konosuba and like all these other shows, and, and some motherfucker came in and was like, mm. actually, you can see a moat around the, um, the map, the isekai map, so this is actually a little bit different, it's like, yeah, I see the moat, I see a motherfucker. But for someone with a trained eye like me, I can tell the difference between a white guy and a... White guy? Between what? a white castle and a five guys. And to any isekai trashmen out there who know what I mean, this feels like the latter. Not enough healing for you? Well, we have- I feel like he's saying that just gut instinct, this show has potential. Like, and we're on like episode four or five right now. And I feel like so far, it definitely does have potential. It's a show definitely worth checking out. I agree. This feels like the latter. Not enough healing for you? Well, we have the unwanted undead adventurer featuring a dead skeleton protagonist slowly leveling his body back up. Oh, that's a total. Is this a power fantasy? Is solo skeleton leveling? Is this fun? Are you guys watching this? Really different thing. Uh, excuse me. Necromancy is just healing for those who believe in the five second rule. Oh, hey, look, a middle aged protagonist, and he's adopted a cute. Oh, this is the um, middle aged man Isekai, right? Little burb. Ah, so it's a simple slice of life about an older gentleman taking care of a burb. I can vibe with that. <laughs> Alright, so Hello. the bird can talk. Well, that's okay. Every slice of life needs its quirk nowadays. Surprise! Isekai, bitch! Okay, yep. well, I wasn't expecting an I think this had like an hour long premiere, right? Isekai, but I'm not gonna complain. Oh, he's starting his own training company and learning the economic. Wow. I mean, Skimmy Shimulin Fantasy is also doing the same shit right now. It's just like a business. I get it now. So it's going to be a Spice and Wolf-esque anime with an Isekai twist. Surprise! So bro just running his merchantry business or what? What, what is it? It's just like a business. I get it now. So it's going to be a Spice and Wolf-esque anime with an Isekai twist. Surprise! Magic, bitch! Jesus. So we can use magic in the real world. That makes sense. It's an Isekai after all. Surprise! Psychics! Bitch. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so I guess there are psychics in the real world and he's getting tailed by a shadow organization of psychics now well eminence and shadow soundtrack training goods in an isekai with a talking bird so you go back and forth interesting so i think the first time i saw an isekai that does this where you can basically go to the other world and come back to earth right is like uh uh what was it i got a cheat cheat skill in another world i actually enjoyed that premise how you were able to kind of go back and forth and have two different environments that you can interact in and, when, and if the plus somehow like you know comes together it's actually pretty good but who's secretly a three thousand year old demon this show is amazing. We got ourselves a cute little romance, this time with the most precious cinnamon roll who has trouble communicating because she's deaf, making her the actual Laura. Oh, oh, oh. I, I'm going to cancel if I fucking say this, but I feel like. No, I'm not going to say it. Accurate, no, this I'm not going to say it. No, adorable. no. I haven't seen it's a adorable. Like this since the silent voice, but this seems far more on the wholesome side. And it better stay that way, because if anything happens to this girl, I will be shooting on sight. Studio Bones are going through their 25th anniversary and they pulled out all the stops to celebrate. We got a new anime original sci-fi tokusatsu style show that takes place in the world that's Mecca? a little bit of Blade Runner, a little bit of Carolyn Tuesday with also gay girls in it. I feel like more and more I'm relying on anime original shows to get my sci-fi fix and this clearly has one of the most intricate and well thought out worlds of the season. And normally I love the show don't tell approach where I get to discover the world and story as it naturally develops, but this beginning feels like just a bit too much information has been omitted. What are the characters trying to do here? Why are we fighting? Who the hell are these people in the first place? I'm gonna let it cook because I smell. 
I don't think you guys have the uh, the attention span to watch this show because, like, if it's not like an isekai, then it's like whatever, well, right? For you guys, delicious meal coming along. But I hope I at least get a look at the Metallic Rouge, though. I I have heard this title. People are kind of hyping it up. This is another show that's probably objectively really good, but uh, you know, you guys are a bunch of fucking isekai degenerates, and we gotta go with that. You soon. Ah, uh, another love confession victim. Fireworks and confessions. Every fucking time you want to confess and then fireworks fucking starts to, you know, blur out what you're saying. And maybe they're even back on the way home. Someone's going to trip and you're going to have to give them a piggyback and there'll be an intimate scene. And, and they'll say instead of a confession, you can have that piggyback as a fucking consolation prize. Thank you, Mr. Romcom. Some of the goddamn anime fireworks. Well, you couldn't have picked more. Oh, wait, wait. Tales of Wedding Rings. This is an isekai. This is actually big booba show. Actually, isn't there a lot of titties in this show? Like actual nipples, right? It's like. Basically, it's just you got you have like a harem of like five five rings, five women or some shit. Way to start off a romance plot line in your anime, but surely they can't drag this on for too long, right? Look, he clearly likes her. She clearly likes him. This motherfucker traveled to another world for her, and now they're bloody married. They're married for God's sakes. Yeah. I've seen anime romance bullshit before, but how long can this possibly take? <laughs> Wait, maybe they actually gave him a second chance. This has never happened before in the history of anime. This is it. She's given him the perfect layup. Bro's got a former girls, former girls, right? No way you can fuck this up. Okay, but, but, a fr he just friend zoned her. I'm calm. <laughs> Giga Chad, Giga Chad. Bro is sniffing a lot this video. <laughs> it's it's okay. He's just fighting his time until he gets his virgin superpower. That's right. If you make it to the age of 30 without having sex, you become a wizard. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank Absolutely. Y'all know what to do. Please go support Gigguk. You know, we love to sm support smaller content creators. He may only have 3.56 million subs, but with your guys' help, and if you go like his video, I think he can make 4 mil. Solo. Oh, sorry, I was, was going to say anime this season but i started off by saying solo leveling yes anime 2024 right now it is only january winter 2024 but i think that we got a lot of great titles solo leveling chain soldier wrong way to use healing magic bro didn't even mention level 99 villainous i just realized holy fuck i can't believe he did level 99 villainous this dirty but those are some great shows that we're watching right now i don't think he even talked about skimming Moon fantasy unless he glossed over it he, he did he glossed over it very gently but there's a lot of good animes airing right now and leading into next season too Yo, we got a lot of good titles like Mushoku Tensei Core 2 coming up, so stay tuned for that.